Spencer Compton, Duke of Wilmington, was a trade-off first master of the depository during a time of political insecurity. Brought into the world around 1674 to distinguished guardians, his dad was third lord of Northampton. He was taught at St. Paul's School, the Centre Sanctuary and Trinity School, Oxford. Compton's family foundation proposed faithfulness to the Conservatives, his uncle was Minister of London, be that as it may, following a fight with his senior sibling, Compton, moved his kind gestures to the Whigs. He sat as MP for I in Suffolk from 1698 to 1710 and afterward for different Sussex seats from 1713 to 1728. Compton turned out to be near Robert Walpole and was delegated executive of the Lodge Political Race and Honours Board of Trustees in 1705. This mirrored his advantage in parliamentary cycle and it was here, as opposed to in splendid rhetoric, that Compton's abilities lay. He was associated with the prosecution of the combustible conservative minister Henry Sacheverell in 1710 and subsequently found it hard to gain another seat. When a question with ruler Cornwallis, benefactor of the I seat, kept him from remaining there. Again, following the Hanoverian progression that carried George I to the English lofty position in 1714, Compton expected fast political headway. He was ultimately compensated with jobs as financier of the ruler of Ribb's family and speaker of the place of Hall in 1715. Compton's information on parliamentary practice and point of reference demonstrated important in the last job. His associations with both the ruler of Ribs and Walpole set him in a troublesome position when relations separated between the sovereign and his dad, George I, in 1717. In an episode known as the Whig split, Walpole and Charles, second Viscount Townsend, drove a gathering of the sovereigns. Companions into resistance against the Lord's clergyman, James, Duke Stanhope and the third Baron of Sunderland. They were spurred both by worries about arrangement and backing for the sovereign. However Compton currently wound up endeavouring to stay impartial in the Speaker's seat. With the Completion of the Whig split in 1720, Walpole and Townsend floated back towards the ruler, while Compton stayed faithful to the Sovereign of Wales. Compton became paymaster of the powers in 1722. However the Sovereign made no confidential of his craving to supplant Walpole with Compton when he prevailed to the high position. Hence, on getting fresh insight about his dad's demise from Walpole, in June 1727, the new ruler clarified his inclination for Compton to head the public authority. A mix of Walpole's diligent effort and Compton's tentativeness implied, notwithstanding, that Walpole had the option to go on as first master of the treasury. Compton was recognized, as noble, and later Baron of Wilmington, in 1728, maybe in light of the fact that Walpole was quick to eliminate him. As a likely opponent in the hall, he held areas of strength for and of Walpole and kept up with contacts with various resistance figures, yet he joined the organization as ruler Privy Seal and afterward master leader of the committee in 1730. He stayed a sensibly faithful pastor for a large part of the 1730s. However his dedication included some significant pitfalls, following clues he could join the resistance during the extract emergency of 1733, he was made a knight of the garter. As Walpole's power ebbed away following the formal statement of war with Spain in 1739, Compton encouraged George II to recreate the service on a more extensive base. He was compensated with arrangement as first ruler of the depository in February 1742. He endeavoured to acquire oppositional Whigs and Conservatives to remake the service yet bombed notwithstanding obstruction, both from George II and Walpole's adherents. He stayed the main leader of the organisation until 
his passing in July 1743 yet Walpole's political beneficiaries, Newcastle and Pelham, and John. Master Carteret stayed strong political figures. Unmarried, his bequests were passed on to his nephew, James Compton, 5th Lord of Northampton.